Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be a rather involved and technical tutorial, so I want to go ahead and get started. We're currently looking at Drone Repeat. I released this in the App Store a couple of weeks ago, and I've personally been using it to uh, frame a nadir shot once a day over my house, and I want to put together just an annual kind of change in landscape. But recently, over the weekend, we had a lot of hail that came through our neighborhood, and this is a repeat that I did at night. Actually, after the hail storm, you can see it all over uh, the back porch. But what I've been trying to figure out is how we could actually tile a single image, right? Get it overlaid on a Google map into tiles. And I want to demonstrate just the output. So here is the current Google map. This is the day before the hail storm. This is the uh, night after the hail storm. And then the day after. So if you go over to the trees that cover the driveway. These are live oaks. You can see this is the day before and this is the day after the hail and definitely a dramatic change in, in landscape. I spent a bunch of time over the weekend trying to figure out how to tile a single image and I'm going to demonstrate how you take these images then as you can see in this photo here geo-reference them. After we geo-reference them we're going to convert them to tiles and then make them available in a web map. So starting with your imagery, that doesn't necessarily have to come with drone repeat. Obviously it needs to be a nadir photo, but we take that photo, we run it into QGIS for geo-referencing, run it through GDAL to tiles to convert it to tiles, and then in my case I use Leaflet to display those tiles over a Google map. And the reason I chose Leaflet is it's simple to use and it actually allows you to get more zoom. You can over zoom as we can see here in the Google map photo where there's pixelation and using the standard Google Maps API you can only zoom to I believe 20 in, in my area of the world so Leaflet lets us go a little bit further. The first program we'll be using is QGIS. It's freely available uh, for download. I'm running it on a Mac and I will say that I'm sure there are those of you that say, hey Dennis, why don't you just upload this imagery to Drone Deploy, Maps Made e Easy, whatever uh, other cloud services out there. And I think it's just important. I personally like to know what's going on. And at the same time, I believe Drone Deploy and some of the others will not let you do a single photo. So they're all about stitching multiple uh, photos into a nice ortho mosaic. So just wanted to add that side note, uh, QGIS, we're going to use the open layers plugin. You can see that I have the Google uh, satellite layer turned on. If you have QGIS or download it, you're going, going to need uh, that plugin. And also, you can only zoom so far in uh, QGIS. So you can see this little render toggle. I'm going to uh, unclick that so we can over zoom and get further in. Now, there will be pixelation, but that's okay. You'll see why here in a minute it's going to be very important that we can at least get down uh, to this level to be able to geo-reference our photo. So another plugin that we'll need, the uh, geo-referencer, you can see it here underneath the raster menu. I'll go ahead and select that. Now what the geo-referencer will allow us to do is load a image into uh, the canvas. So I'll go ahead and go to my imagery We'll start with the first photo the day before the hail. I'm not going to actually go through all three. I'll just show you guys how to do one and open that up. For our coordinate system, we want to use WGS84. You can see here we are with the georeferencer window and underneath it with QGIS. Before we begin georeferencing, let me mention that uh, I've been using Drone Repeat with my Mavic Pro. Super impressed with the camera, but all of these photos are geotagged. If you're shooting uh, maybe PixHawk with a USB trigger or a DJI aircraft, most likely your photos are going to be a geotag, but that's not the same as georeference. Georeferencing will give us our projection, allow us to get orientation, all of that stuff. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and zoom in. I like to zoom in on very fixed areas, you know, driveways, corners of roofs, uh, that type of stuff that are fairly easy to reference. So what I'll do next is I'm going to use this point here. I'll click the add point button. I'll click the corner of the driveway. It'll allow us to enter latitude and longitude. I'll do more of the uh, 
the cheat method from map canvas so I'll click that and that will actually allow me to uh, select the same point on the base image this Google map and I'll try to be as exact as possible I'll click it there hit OK we can see a little red dot shows up here and then we have a little red dot on our uh, QGIS base layer so what we'll do next is we'll find another point of reference I won't bore you guys with the details I'll just zoom to another and then uh, fast forward through the rest I'll do this corner of the house click add point actually before I do that let me go back to our map and make sure that I have uh, that in view so there we go I'm going to select this front corner of the house hit from map canvas which coordinates with this guy right here hit OK so in our GCP table we can see that we have two points a reference so far I normally recommend four or five just to get a good a set of points referenced on your image I have four ground control points set and I'll just add a side note if you look at these Delta XY uh, if you read documentation they say you want to be in the area five pixels or less you can see here we're at 6.25 6.42 that's good enough uh, you can obviously continue to work to improve that if I zoom in you can see there's there's that offset we don't have great reference imagery in our base layer so we're doing the best we can uh, with all the pixelation going on uh, but with that being said we're ready to uh, begin georeferencing uh, it'll ask us our different settings so we'll leave these default types target SRS want to keep that at 3857 output raster I'll just since I've done this before I'm going to call it modified 2 we'll go ahead and overwrite that file hit OK and a couple things will happen one is it'll export an image to our system that is geo referenced and at the same time it will overlay it in QGIS now if you remember I had to disable this render uh, toggle so that I could get in close enough but now you can see if I zoom out we have decent accuracy you can see there's a little bit of offset there but you can always go at, back and improve that so uh, that covers the geo referencing section you can do that for each image it will output a geo tiff we'll take a look at that now here's the original JPEG here is our geo reference version you can see that it's rotated uh, there is this black boundary just because there's no image to fill that area but that will actually be taken care of in the next step when we convert to tiles but here is the original JPEG and I'll just show you guys the difference uh, from a GDAL info perspective we can run the GDAL info command on that JPEG you can see that there is no coordinate system we do have latitude and longitude as I discussed before and our corner coordinates are our pixel coordinates you know this is a 4,000 by 3,000 pixel photo but now let's go ahead and run that same command on the uh, TIFF file and if we look at that you can see that it picks up a lot more information uh, there's our projection system WGS 84 and then our corner coordinates that were specified through our geo referencing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually tile this. We're going to use the gdial to tiles command. I'm going to do zoom 18 through 22. That's our zoom levels and that will get us in pretty far. And I'll just specify uh, the input image to file and then I'll give it an output directory. We'll just call this um, prehail since it happened before the hailstorm and what you'll see as the Python script runs it's converting those into tiles at various zoom levels uh, that we've specified so let's go ahead and get into that folder now there's a pre hail folder now you can see the different folders for each zoom level 18 through 22 that we've specified the really awesome thing about the gdal to tiles command is it will create different source files for you the google maps version now you will need an api key uh, to put into that code for it to work so i'm not going to do that but let's look at the open layers you can see there is our location and we can see the overlay there now the one thing as i mentioned earlier in the video this is as far as we can zoom so with the standard gdal to tiles you'll get this open layers uh, reference but 
uh, I was able to go further than that as we can see here in my source file by using the leaflet API and what I'll do I'm not going to cover it in this video I'll do an upcoming video for those who are interested that just shares how to do this I'll share the source code so if you go through these steps all you need to do is update a little URL in your code and then you'll get a reference to whatever overlay uh, that you've tiled together so I know that was a rather in-depth tutorial but I wanted to share that process I think it's really cool to be able just to take a single nadir shot uh, not have to worry about stitching and all of that and really just to understand the process so we started with drone repeat got the images and once again you can get those nadir images with any program that you want uh, we brought them into QGIS use the georeferencer tool to georeference them GDAL to tiles to convert them to tiles and then leaflet to uh, create a map with our uh, aerial imagery overlaid on it. I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear it below. And until next time, thanks for watching.